so bad that it's, it's, it, 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 all his body fell on the confidence he had on himself. And when that thing happened, he never knew that he would fall. And look at what Jesus said him. Jesus said, truly I tell you before roster crown, you will deny me. But Peter replied, look at what Peter replied. He said, even if I will die for you, I will never deny you. Look at the king of kings, the seer, the one that knows all. He told you indeed, you are going to deny me because he see front, he see ahead of you. And Peter said, truly, I will not deny you. And what is he teaching us? This thing he telling us that having overconfidence in us is a very horrible something. It's not good. Look at what happened to Peter. And the truth is that we don't even know, you know, when this thing is coming because we so much put ourselves in a situation, in, in, in a, an overconfidence. When that thing comes, most times he took us on our way. And that is why God allowed some of terrible situation to happen to us. That is what I called in our last program, encounters. And that was why Jesus said, Peter, I will set you on encounter so that you see how you overconfident in yourself so that you can release yourself. That your elastic, you have to allow it. Don't stretch it. Leave it as it is. If you stretch so much that you have so much confidence in you, I tell you that when the time comes, that stretch, you will go away. You will see your size as small as you are, that you cannot do more than you, what you can do. So now, when you see that, so what, remember we're talking about pride. So when you see what happened to Peter, God allowed it, and this is what we call encounter in this school. Because there's no way you will know that that thing is in you until when it comes. So when the encounter pop up, then you begin to see your reactions. If the encounter doesn't come, you will know what you will ask. <laughs> that was why Jesus said, Peter, encounter is coming. And this encounter, when it comes, you will deny me. Peter said, no, I will not. Because he have confidence in himself. But Jesus has known that all of you disciples, what is coming in future, when that thing comes, I know you guys will deny me. Because he know that it's not going to be easy. So encounter and what encounter does is God allow it to, to triggers our situation, triggers our surrounding so that you will come out and show who you are really. It will also weigh your faith, weigh your confidence in God, weigh you as a person, describe you as a person. And this is where your healing starts. Because if Peter didn't deny, he wouldn't have had healing. But when he denied that kind of cry, mourn, he weep. How can me, the whole me, how can I deny you? How can I do this? How can this? I can't believe I did this. How did I do this? Oh, oh. So this is what is a call encounter. So Jesus permitted Peter and other disciples, let them go through it. Even when they went out fishing, they never know that they can leave Jesus and go their way. But when Jesus comes, he encourages them. He says, come back, guys. You can't run away. We have entered into this. It's a covenant. No going back. Let's go back to the basis. And he took them back and reminded them what they started. They must finish the, the assignment. So these are why things happen. So he does say that God knows that Peter will deny him. So why wouldn't God just pray and, you know, divert it or, or cast it so that it's not going to happen? So that is all about this school. So in the school, when you start the school, you, you understand that all the encounters that God brings it to do what? To train you, to extract what is in you that it doesn't suit him and to make you better. Why? He doesn't want that thing to destroy us. Because these are the things that have been causing problems, have met hundreds of people. And these people, their character is, is, is not something to manage. But when they, they bring, come into the school by the grace, if you begin to watch them now, you'll be smiling. But at the beginning when I met them, oh my goodness, you can't manage them. But while the school, the training was going on, I begin to see God transforming them. I begin to see God changing them. Because God have made it clear to them that the way they are is not how they're supposed to be. There must be a change. And they give their will to God. And the journey started, which was not an easy one. So that is what's uh, about Peter and the disciples. And if you watch at the end, you know, Jesus, I, I, I now believe that another thing that why God want Peter, you know, to fall is so that he will not judge anybody anyhow. Because if Peter didn't fall, I tell you, the, the glory of the world would have, would have wrapped him up. But God let him to reach that level so that when he, he see others falling, he can able to tell them, guys, don't fall. Even though you fall, guys, get up. Let's continue. 
that, that, that the way you are on the ground, get up. You must not be there. Remember my own time. I failed and I managed to get up. And that is where I am today by the grace of God. So guys, get up, get up. Let's go. So that is the encounter we go through. Help us to climb up better and higher. And also to drag people that also fell, that is staying there so that they can be able to get up. That is why it's bad to judge people. Why? You don't know why they did that. You don't know what, what lingered them to eat. You don't know what caused them to be that. And when you begin to judge them and judge them, means you does not want God to, to let them up again. He doesn't want God to forgive them. He just want God to destroy them. So, and you know what? Such thing you are using to judge that person. I tell you, if they give you a little encounter, even 50% of 100% of what the person go through, you will be worse than that person. Because you, when things happen to somebody, he acted or he behaved somehow. You never know what happened. You never know what he go through to behave like that. And you see, people are so much open mouth. I want to tell you that person is even better than you. When such encounter set before you, you will fall deeper, lower than that person. So this school of the spirit is in letting us to know that anybody can fall at any level, and that is what is helping me. I always see myself, I have never started. I have never reached anywhere. And I always see myself, you know what? I think I just need to start again. Why? If I begin to see myself, I have started, I have climbed, I have reached a stage. I want to tell you, look my fall. I will fall to the ground. And because I've fallen so many times, so it helps me to understand people. So when anyone working with me, in any corner of, or in any level of your falling, I will tell you, don't worry. If I tell you how, how my falling, how failure have reached, you can able to heal yourself. Please don't talk about that anymore. The most important thing, come, let's continue. Jesus still needs you. Let's move forward. So it helps me that I doesn't downgrade people. It helps me that I doesn't look so much deeper on what people do, but I look deeper on that thing that makes you to fall too bad. That thing has to be dealt with. Then I'll begin to focus on what must have make you to do this. Now, bring yourself before God. There is a supernatural power called Holy Spirit who is ready to deal with that matter so that you're not going to fall the second time. And also, the thing helps me a lot. That was during the time of uh, COVID, a lot of people are collecting money from government, blah, blah, blah. I, I said, God, you know what? I need to grab mine. You know, it's a free one. He said, you must not try it. So I begin to say, God, but why? He began to give me reasons. And if not that I have fallen before with encounter past years, if this one come, I'll still fall it. But I've had an encounter one time where he told you that I must not do that. So, and when I tried to do it, the thing dragged my spiritual life bound to zero. And when I come out of it, God nearly killed me. And when I come out of it, when this one come, I say, God, I'm not ready to die in your hands. I shift and jump and pass it because I have experienced the, 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 the how disastrous when you fall out of the hands of God, what it causes. So I don't want to face such a thing. That is why when he now say, don't do this, I say, yes, father, I remove my hand because I don't want to experience it again. So these are helping me when I see people going through such, I'll tell them, you know what? It is not the end of the road. Just get up, let's continue. There is still better in the future. So we have to, we've just finished about Jesus and how he allowed the disciples to fall so that they, because Peter as their head is also supposed to be judging people. But now, after he must have seen himself, I don't think he can open mouth and judge people anymore because the, the, the level of his falling is in the crimes of it that I don't think anybody can deny Christ the way Peter denied Christ. So Jesus allowed him to fall to such a crime so that nothing will give him impetus to come on tomorrow and black. So that is what we're talking about, the refining process. So when the process starts, God will begin to bring things that will bring out all those vices. You will begin to see yourself <laughs> acting things. You never know. You can act. And how can you add those things when the encounter comes? When God hits you? That is why in our last training, he says, method of the training, the people he's using to train you. Why is he doing so? 
He will grab this person to throw you a bomb. He will let this person to bring this. He will let this person to hammer you. He will bring this person to do this. He lets you to do, to do that. Why? He wants to grip something out. He wants to pop something out. If that thing didn't happen, the thing inside you will not come out. So that is how the training goes. And at this point, you will now see that everything that happened around you will settle it amicably. Why? You know that you are, the, you are the bone of contention. You are the one that God is looking for. Not even the person that de de dealt with you. Not even the person that harmed you. But you are the one God is looking for. And he allowed that thing to happen. At this point, you wouldn't even look at who does that to you. You tell the person, please go, go. It's not me that God, it's not you that God is looking for. It is me that God is looking for. Brethren, when you understand things like that, your life will be so easy. You'll be smiling and you'll be happy in your life. Then, Number five, another one is Moses and Pharaoh. I've talked about that. But the area I want to speak is the area of the serpent of the Moses and the serpent, uh, sorry, the staff of Moses turned to, uh, uh, um, the staff of Moses turned to serpent. And then Mo, um, Pharaoh now acted his own. What is this talking about? You see how proud Pharaoh is. That you know what, I can do it with my sorcery power. You know how problem. I have God that can, I can stand, they can, they can, they have been there for me. So don't worry yourself, God, I am up and doing. And eventually the two power jam. And what happened at the end? Where did he last fail? He lasts him to the grave because he could not recognize the supernatural power of God. So again, if you watch, you see, that was why God is God of patience. So let me bring you home. You see, in this journey of the refining process, God give a lot of patience. God get time for us to fix because he you know it's not easy. Do you know what he tells God to is a mathematics? He you know what he tells God to program someone, initiate the annoyance on the person. And now the person will now come and provoke me so that the anger will come forth. <laughs> this is just a big chemistry that God does with humanity. And now, because you have understand the way or what God wants to do, when the person as an instrument triggers what is in you, the anger, the chemistry will not come forth, the furious or the anger. Some people have ordinary anger. Some people get furious. Some people get rot. This anger is different from furious. Furious is different from rot. So, but everybody has this own. What will trigger your anger is different from what will trigger your rot. And it's different from what we trigger your, 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 your furious. So on this, you see that it takes God a lot of work to know what and what to do to this, to comfort. It takes God a lot to know whom to use, to throw on you, to bring that thing out. What is God's purpose? He wants to trash it. Remember crude oil. It has to go through the process to get the best. And what is God's purpose? He wants the people he will reign with in his, in his kingdom. That is just it. So if we understand that things God is doing is to, you know, to, to get us a beautiful bride. Like Revelation 19 says, let us be glad for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And he has made his bride to be ready. And to be ready, look at his garments. And now when you talk of the garment, you talk about the, the act, the righteousness act. The act. So what we take the same to heaven is the act. It's not talking of physical garment, but the act. So that act is what we are acting negatively. So when God sees it, <laughs> would you beg? Me and you will not reign in my kingdom the way you are. We are my minister, fine. You teach people, fine. We are defending me to extend, fine. <laughs> but I want to tell you, the character you are portraying there, you can't be with me there. I have to come and do something on you. And before you know to begin to review what you want to deal with, and these are what we read in the F.A. Garantian. Adoratory, sorcerers, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outburst of rot, rot, selfishness, selfish ambitions, dissension, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, reverseness, and all kind of unforgiveness. So these are the things that entered into the crude, into the you. As a, as, as a vessel into you as a person. So when God now, you know, bring you close, you become a born again. Born again is a ticket you have to enter into the, fine, the refining process. It's like you have your money, you buy your beans. Then 
You now bring the beans into a process to be able to use it and you eat it. So the same with God. So born again is a ticket to come in. And when you come in, the door is access open for everybody. That is why the door is open for everybody. Any religion you are open for, come in and then you receive Christ. The born again you have become. Then you enter into the process. So this school of the spirit, I tell us, is a, is a process that God have decided in these last days to do by himself. And that is why no human being can deliver you from this kind of characters, from this kind of things written in Galatians chapter 5. It is God that knows their roots. It is God who knows their base. And it is God that we, you know, position them, take them to the scan, take them to the, to, to the lab, do some CCTV scan, and at the end, he will now modularize it and mold it. And he now starts losing, looking for vessel. <laughs> la, la, la. Oh my goodness, God, did I finish me here. He'll begin to look for vessel that is suitable to deal with that. So it's not, there are vessels that, there are some things husband can do. There are things wife can do. There is vessel of um, friends, relative, community, government, and, um, and, and even yourself. So God is the one that knows which vessel is suitable for deal with one to pop up the modern spirit in you. So many people don't know that they can kill. So God knows, but if the modern spirit is in you, God will now look for a vessel that can throw by encounter that the modern spirit will appear. And you'll be surprised. So I can kill. I use my own as an example when I want to kill my son. So you see, I have that spirit that I become so furious that I want to kill the boy. So go use that thing to expose what is in me. And by the time after acting, thank God the boy didn't die. Then after acting, my eyes open. These are what happened to people. After most of act, the senses will come back. The tension will come back. You can imagine where as of anger you kill someone. And when you kill the person with that anger, after a few minutes, the, the tension will come down. When the tension comes down, you now look at your fellow brethren. It may be your best friend. It may be your neighbor. By then, you have wasted the life. And you begin watching. You begin to cry. It's not my intention to kill this person. I didn't plan to kill. What happened to me? How did I do this? God, and when they take you to police station, you will still be shedding tears. I didn't mean to kill him. We are just fighting. I didn't know the thing can harm him. I just pinned the iron and blow his head, and he died. I, did, 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 did. I, I don't know how to pick knife. I stabbed him. I didn't, I didn't mean to kill. I'm not killing my life. Oh my goodness, you be all this gospel be already in the but it already is bad. So this refining process, God brings it when He gives you the signal that you have that modern spirit. You begin to cry. God, I never know I can kill. I hate killing people. I don't want to see blood. But how did I myself act that I wanted to kill this person? Means this thing is inside, hidden, but something is thrown and triggers it. Then the people, the things will come up. So that is what God does in this refining process. And remember, when you take crude oil, you never know how many particles inside I have to remove until when you enter into the machine. That machine is what is called this encounter. It takes God a lot. I tell people in the Holy Ghost school in the ministry, I tell them, you know what? If you can able to buy malt and give God to drink, for able to allow things to happen to your life, you need to be praising God, glorifying God all the time for allowing these things to happen. Because if they doesn't happen, it will not go out of you. And it will be a time bomb. At yeah, the dying minute of your race on earth, this may take you to hell, which nobody knows. Hallelujah. So, um, the, so we have done with, uh, the next person we're going to do with is Jonah encounter. Pride, we're talking of pride, people with pride. So we have seen how, um, what's the name? Uh, Philo was destroyed at the end because of pride. All the nine plague was the chances God is giving to him so that he can come down, yet he refused. At the end, he ended his life in the sea with his men. Then let's bring Jonah. Something happened. You can imagine the encounter. God doesn't want Jonah to suffer, but Jonah make himself to suffer. You can get that in the book of Nineveh, Jonah chapter 4 and verse 2. So when you, when you talk about what happened to Jonah, God said, go to Tashish and send these people a message of warning that I am ready to destroy them. And let's see what pride can do. This guy, out of prideful, out of 
you know, who is this God that I can be obedient to you? I don't even think that is what I want to do. I have my own plans. I have a, a, a place to minister in Tashish. They're waiting for me. You know, a message of come as you are. I'm okay with them. Let me just go there and have my phone. But message of warning is a message of judgment. And already the Bible said the iniquity of Nineveh is exceedingly great. So that kind of people is already wrapped with evil. So you can't just give them confrontation message. They will kill you. You may be passing the message, they will stone you to death. So Jonah know that if he go further to pass such a message to such a nation, he may die. So he doesn't want such. He disobeyed God out of that pride. He went his way. Then something happened on the, on the, on the process. So on the process where he free to Tashish, when Jonah now entered, when God sent the encounter. So you see what I'm just saying about refining process. Jonah may not know in his life that he will disobey God. He will be so proudful. Can you imagine as a prophet, I send you to Nineveh. He said, no, I'm going to Tashish. What a pridefulness. Then, but Jonah never knew that God set him on that encounter so that he will, as a prophet, because he has become so proud that when God say A, he will say B. When God said B, he will say A. So God has to deal with it. And that was why God sent him with such an encounter. On his way to free, he now sent him a tempest in the water. And the tempest now brought that eventually he ended in the belly of the fish. So when he ended in the belly of fish, according to uh, chapter 2, verse 4, he said, For I know, look at Jonah repentance. For I know that you are gracious, immerciful, slow to anger, and abundant in steadfastness. Look at how Jonah just known God because he entered. <laughs> Because he ate that belly of the fish. With that belly of the fish, how will Jonah recognize God being gracious in mercy? How will Jonah remember that God is steadfast in love? How will Jonah know that God is God that forgives sin? So his encounter you go through every day, what you are going through every day, whatever it may be, would a husband leave you, would a wife leave you, would a business crumble, would they sack you for a job, whether you are sick, whether you are, you are they, they refuse your visa, whether you don't have any food or, or no uh, money to pay bills, whether your family, you your, 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 your have a dead one, you don't have money to bury, whether you are not having a house to live, you've been squatting with the people, any, whether you want admission, you university have not gotten any kind of thing you are going through. It is the belly of the fish. God allowed it for you to be able to sort God out and know what God can do. So this guy in the belly of fish now know that God is the one that can relent in disaster. Then look at the more encounter. That is why when God forgive you and deal with you treasures, uh, 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 humbly and the lovely, try to deal with people lovely and humbly. Because when he cried and remind God that you are not God that cannot relent, you are God that can relent in, you know, not condemning him in disaster. That is in Jonah chapter 2, Jonah chapter 4, verse 2. Then when you go further, look at what happened. God was very angry with, um, was with, uh, with Jonah because he sent Jonah to send, uh, uh, it's like a warning message to the Nineveh, but he refused. But that's such opportunity that Jonah has to ask for forgiveness. And that was in the burial of fish. And God looked at the heart and see he has found what he wants in the life of Jonah. This is all the training. When God set you on a fire of encounter, he's targeting something. And that is why people will be in one encounter, one month, two months, three months. People will be in one encounter 10 times. Because what God is targeting has not got it. So he will keep bombarding you with the one. Keep bombarding you with the one. Keep bombarding you with the one until he get what he wants. I met one person some few weeks ago here. And um, after we, we, met, we know, then last some weeks ago, he, she was sharing the encounter. She, in fact, she's crying. She's going through a lot. So um, I didn't even know what he's going through, but I ministered to him as the spirit lead. And by the grace of God, he got herself back. But it was yesterday she now able to manage to share one of the things she's going through. And she said how she lost her beloved gadget and um, she's feeling so bad. And there's a lot of things, combination of one thing or the other. So that make her being depressed. So, but when I was ministering to her that yesterday, I was telling her that, what of if, why God allow you to lose this jacket, uh, your, um, your gadget? It's because you have not known what God is telling you. 
and you have not ready to obey him, then you allow that thing to lost. She cried, she shouted, please don't go that side. God is telling me don't do this. God is telling me don't do that. God is telling me don't do that. And I'm disobeying. And you just stuck it. I say, wow. So this is exactly what God is saying. He said, yeah, what is very hard. He remembered this. He remembered that. How will I cope? How do I manage? How do, 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 do? I said, all those things is flesh talking. When you can listen to him and go in, you will know why. And when I was talking to him, to her, I tell her, be careful because another one will happen. And this second one will happen is what will now make you to be weak. Finally, and now go in and know what God is talking. So that's why I said he may do that in 10 times, depending on how you repented. And also depending on the weight of what he throws on you to bring out what he really wants to remove in you. So we are still in Jonah. And um, when you think of what happened in the next um, uh, encounter of the Jonah, uh, the last encounter was about the shade, about the tree. God, you know, where he was there, you know, being sober. God, why are you so wicked? You asked me to go and send this message to people. And you need people of Nineveh will think I'm not, I'm not a good prophet, that what I prophesy doesn't happen, you know, based on that, he was just there, suling, you know, outside there under the tree. And God gave him the tree to shelter him from the sun and the heat. Before I know it, within the take of an eye, the, 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 the tree withered. And this guy gets angry. Why is he angry? Then, but there's something that God said that, that I want to bring in my last, um, the, my last topic. He says, that should be in um, verse 10 to 11. Look at when Jonah was angry against God because of, you know, withering the tree and he doesn't have shelter anymore and sun was beating him and the heat was going on him. Look at what God says. God replied to Jonah saying, you have been concerned about this plant. Though you did not tend it, you did not tend it, you did not plant it, but you are worried over the plant. You didn't planted, uh, planted it, you didn't water it, you didn't tend it, you didn't grow it. I am the Lord that planted it, to water it, to tend it, and it grows and gives you shelter. Then God says, it springs up overnight and died overnight, and I should not hear consign for a, shouldn't I consign for a great city? What is God saying? God is telling Jonah that this particular tree you are crying for is just a tree that grows and it shelter you just overnight. Now, if you can be angry because of this, why wouldn't I have concern for the people of the Nineveh? And people of Nineveh is me, God, because they have my bone, they have my flesh, they have my blood. They are from me. I breathe into them and they become a man and they become a being. So, and because I don't want to destroy my own, I don't want to destroy myself, I put in them I want to save them so that I can save myself because saving them, saving God. Now, you, only three that I withered and you're against me. Honestly, I cast something here. When I study it, I begin to say, okay, now I see why God really wants us to be humble. God really wants us to always think of our failure when we are dealing with people. God wants us not to always see ourselves as the best when dealing with people, that we have to be the least. No wonder Jesus said, if you want to be with me, if you want to be my servant, you must be the last person. You must be, at, you will be the least. You must, you must be a servant. So I begin to think of the truth about this matter is that God allows trials, encounters to come. So what is in us will be exposed. You see how wickedness in the life of Jonah was exposed. But Jonah never knew he's wicked. But God is also judging Nineveh as a wicked nation, as a wicked city God wants to destroy. And Jonah, which was sent to go there and give them warning, is more wicked by, than people of the Nineveh. How can you decide, get angry that God did not destroy the whole Nineveh? You wouldn't even remember yourself that you would have been destroying the belly of the fish and God show you mercy and you come out of fish when you remember God's graciousness, you remember God's forgiveness, that God can relent. Why wouldn't you not think that God can also relent in the sin of Nineveh? He got angry. And this is all just about humanity. When you are saved, you don't want to save others. When you are free, you don't want to feed others. When you have, you don't want others to have. I wonder what is wrong with politicians. 
I don't want, I wonder what, what, what happened to all the philanthropists. What happened to rich people? You are putting and putting and putting and putting for yourself, for your generation. How many years will stay on earth will go? Who will eat the rest? What happened to it? You have people around you. Why not give it out? So if God show you mercy and you see yourself in the position of being rich, why not you show another person mercy and make the person to be in a position of being rich also? For God who show you mercy is the same God. You have God will use you to show another person mercy. But you must remember it is not because you are so wide, because you are so smart, because you are business inclined, because you, your, your parents give you billions or millions to make money. There are people that they deposited millions on them, yet the money crash. And there are some people that give a little money they grow into big. It's, on, it's, it's based on grace. So we must not allow this world to overshadow us or to swallow us. This is why when you enter the school of the spirit, the refining will start. God will begin to expose you. You will see things happening in you. You will never believe that you can act like that. So uh, Jonah did not know that he can act wickedly. And that was why God showed, told him that if a tree that I grow and tend and give leaves that protect you and that wither it. Look at your action. Now think of humanity in the city of Nineveh. I want to save, you want me to destroy them. The truth about all this is that, you see, everything about us is, has to be open. Ask God to open you. Ask God to open you. That is my prayer all time. God, please, I didn't trust myself. And I will never trust myself. I may, I may do worse tomorrow. But you are the God that have the things to see. You are the seer. Lord, begin to see. See most. Every day, God, see, see. Try to see something. that I didn't trust myself. Look inside. You, you must get something and pop it up. Bring it. Let the world see it. Open it and begin to trash it. This should be the prayer of the ministers. This should be the prayer of the believers. This should be the prayer of anybody that intending or having intention of meeting Jesus at the second coming. If he does not do this, I'm telling you, count yourself nowhere because what is in you, God will never allow it to mingle with what is in heaven because there must be no contamination in heaven. So Holy Ghost school or this school of the spirit or the topic we're talking about, pride. And that pride is in the refining process. So when the refining starts, God will pick pride and begin to trash it. There are so many things we are going to talk about pride. But I'll come back later on that pride and other things. Then other people you think about the fire roundup is on, uh, when you think of a Goliath encounter, you see how proudful he is. And at the end, he died. Had he been when he seen uh, David, he combled himself. He wouldn't have died. The next person is Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Had he been, he humbled himself. He wouldn't have, you know, used the cup of vessel of the temple of God. You can imagine. People are insane. And he, he, he saw what happened to his father. He refused to learn from his father. At the end, excuse me, he led him into death. The next person is Absalom, about him and his father, David. Look at what and what brings his, his life down. The next, the next one is Je, uh, Jezebel. Look at how Jezebel, what he did, out of proud. Aha, what is your problem? Nebot Vineyard. Oh my goodness. You have me, your wife, and you are crying, and you are swelling. you don't want to eat, shower, eat, forget the matter. I will give you the land by this time tomorrow. He went and conquered and cooked evil against Nobot. And he took the vineyard. And at the end, he stoned the guy to death. Pride of what, what man can do. I have the ability. I'm in a position. I can do it. Nobody can challenge me. Who <laughs> tell you nobody will challenge you? Pride is horrible. Brethren, pray, let God diagnose you. With a little one, with a big one. And how will you know the big one is there? You cannot, when you enter into the training, the refining starts, when the God take you as a crude oil, put you into the, the machine to refine it, you begin to see them in numbers, which you know, he does not know is there. Then the last but not the least, King Saul. When Saul refused to accept the, his mistake from God, where did he land him? He landed him to lose the kingdom that Israel, that God gave to him. So honestly, uh, because of time, we don't want it to be more, uh, longer than this. I want you to understand that um, these um, vices in us is a lot. You wouldn't know it 
until when you accept, God, I believe there are a lot in me and I'm ready, then God will take you into the diagnosing center, into the scan, CCTV, whatever he wants to use to slay you, he will bring out the results. And when he brings it, medication for it is encounter. He will mold and set up whoever he wishes to use to bring it out to trash it. And the one you need is just to give your will and that self that is not the person that is dealing with you. It's not the person that is provoking you. It is God using the person. Most times I tell disciples, whoever deal with you, go and give the person more for God using the person to deal with what is dealing in you. And if the church of God can understand it like that, I think there's not going to be quarrel. And if you understand it in your marriage setting, there's not going to be quarrel. If you understand it in your business, in the school, with your lecturers and with your professors and the rest of your friends, there will not be quarrel because whatever happens, you will see that God is targeting you. You are the target. When you know you are the target, there will be peace. So this is what we have for today. Thank you so much for joining and um, God bless you. I don't know whether there is a question or something to say. Cognet, are you there? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank God for um for this teaching. It's wonderful. Thank God for everything. Refining process. Honestly, uh when you come into the presence of God, it's going to refine you. You know, the presence of God is like it's like that refining hall, that furnace where we are going to be refined. And uh, just like Mama have said. He's going to refine us with so many things, like encounters we always come across. So whenever you see things coming your way, try to find out what is God trying to take out with this with this encounter coming my way. So it's very, very important. So this is now time for question and uh, you know answer. So if you have any contribution, if you have any question, you are free to bring it up. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. If you have any question, if you have any uh, contribution, this is time to bring it up. Okay, the network is bad. Hello, praise, praise God. Um, I praise have a you. question. Um, can you hear me? Yes, Ooh. please. Okay, this is good. Um, I have a very important question. So when it comes to when it comes to this finding process where God begins to walk in you, remove all sort of vices that works as a, a stronghold in our lives, uh, which tends to also keep us under the edge of it. So I'm wondering how how long do you think uh, in an encounter? With God, I mean uh, the encounter that is related to this refining process. How long? How long can it last in order to deliver us from certain vices in our life? And what can we do to really align ourselves to that refining process so that that particular vices will be dealt with? Okay, let me just say, for example, pride. How long do you think one can go through this refining process to? Totally free from that price of the vices in their lives. Thank you. Very important question. Yeah. Even when I was teaching, the answer was in part of what I said. You say, how long does it take? It depends on how you accept the dealing, the dealing, the dealing. Because when God is sending the first quarter of the dealing to deal with the pride, he doesn't accept it. If it's something that lasts two months, expect the next three months, expect the next four months, expect the next, month, expect the next six months, and expect even one year. So everything depends on how we accept it. And two, how we understand that God is bringing that encounter to deal with the pride. That is why you must, first of all, see God opening up the pride you see that is in you. One, then two, it's like somebody that has gone to a diagnosis and they found the result that indeed you have pride. So now you are convinced you have it. Number two is that uh, prescription. How do you heal it? 
So how to heal it is that now, oh, I'm a very proudful person and I'm tired of being this. Then God decided to give prescription. That prescription should be, he will use your wife to remove the pride. And the encounter will be coming. I want to tell you, for you to know that you are too proudful and your wife is an instrument God wants to use to deal with that. And encounter will begin to come. And those encounter, when it's coming, God will tell you, you can't beg that woman. You can't ask her, you are sorry. Uh, that you are sorry. At the beginning, it's not going to be, how can I go and tell my wife, I'm sorry, a woman I married in my life, that, 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 that. no, 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 no. You may take one month, you have not done the obedience. You are appropriating your time. But when you understand that, when God said it immediately, because you really want God to work on it, God will tell you, go and beg her. You will cry inside your room. You will weep. Inside of you, you will groan. Even somebody was coming in, you just pretend, but you are there crying. God, how can I do this? How can I beg this woman? This woman, I'm there with, I, I, can, I can't. It, it's too much for me. Half time must have, you know, poor and on up. At the end, they say, you know what? Father, I know it's for my own good. Let that be peace in the house. No problem. I will go. Then you went away and you do what God wants you to do. You see how God break that chain, that level. So another man may come again. If God say he has never gotten it because you still blag, you still give time, you still think of yourself, he said the same account again. So the second time around, you now see, oh, you know what? It's okay. I'll become part of it. Last time I asked her for forgiveness. It's okay. I'll go and do it. Now you can see the first time it wasn't easy. Second time it will become easy. And now it become easy. I tell you that matter is trashed. That uh, uh, fence, you have, you, have, you have jumped it. The encounter will end. And you will see, go now turn to that your wife. And you go begin to give her encounter for her to know that you are begging her does not mean that you don't know your right as a husband. That is how the, the thing go. It turn around immediately. You will not see that your wife, you will be the one that is begging you. Honey, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I'm doing this. I don't know what's come over me. I didn't mean to do this. I didn't mean to do that. Please, so forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm the one that caused the problem, not even you. So that is how the training goes. So it depends on how you accept it, how you give God chance, how you know indeed that that thing is dealing with you. Then that is how long it can go. So that is what I want to say. All right. I think I have something else to say on this issue. Praise okay. God. So, um, you know, whenever encounter is coming to us, one of the things I've discovered that God wants in our life is an understanding. Understanding in the sense that you need to understand what God is, uh, wants to achieve because through this encounter. And uh, why is it occurring? Because I find out that so many persons, like if they are having an, a particular issue, let me use an example. Maybe you, uh, a wife is having an issue or a husband is having an issue with the wife. And at a time, because the husband has now probably come into a personal relationship with God and uh, there is this teaching, you don't need to be arguing with your wife or, uh, 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 encounter, or confront your wife. Just try to endure, try to. And the, the man will now build up that endurance uh, strategy, you know, keeping quiet, or the woman will now build up a journal strategy, keeping quiet, trying to patch things up. Now, you find out that that encounter will be occurring, will be occurring, will be occurring, will be occurring. Though you are trying to know if you can manage it, but it will keep on be occurring because an understanding has not come in. You've not actually find out what God wanted to deal with in you. Just like she said, it might be as a result of your proudful nature that God is bringing up this encounter. So you, you are not seeing yourself. You are seeing your wife and you were like thinking that, okay, if she or uh, if she's nagging about and I keep quiet, that could solve the problem. No, but you find out that the more you keep quiet every day, it's as if she's, she's increasing in her strength. But if you understand that, probably there is something, there is an aspect of my life that God wants to deal with. And this woman, he is using her to trigger it up. And if you find that and begin to walk towards it, it works with an understanding. So once that understanding comes in, instead of uh, managing uh, managing the situation, because we are good at managing situation. And the funny thing about managing the situation is that one day you might become tired of it and you bust out. You bust out of that management. So understanding the reason why this encounter is occurring, understand, because 
everything God is doing, he wants us to have an understanding. Mm. My people perish for lack of understanding. So that understanding is, is that knowledge of the reason, you know, if you know why this thing, Bible made us to know that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is very, very important. So you need mm. to understand why this thing is occurring. Why, 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 where have I made that mistake? What aspect mm. of me that is triggering this thing up? And for you to understand, you need to reflect deep into yourself. You need to get out of yourself and look into yourself to be able to see. It. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know. Ades, did you want to say something? Uh, Gabriel, do you want to add something? Uh, good evening. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really following. I think okay. we just pray that God will empower us. I think well, from what I can just deduce this, or the summary, God, uh, because uh, when he's taking us through a process, mm -hmm. it will never be palatable to the woman flesh. That's why mm -hmm. the Bible says the spirit is willing, but the flesh mm -hmm. is weak. So we just pray that God will give us the grace to obey him, no matter how tense or how difficult the process is. And at the end mm -hmm. of the day, we'll be able to enjoy God. That's Amen. the only thing I can just say. Thank God you. bless you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, you rightly get it right because all those things is dealing with flesh and the flesh doesn't want anything to touch it. So that was why the school of the spirit, that's what Scurso wants, uh, Akachu said, understanding. So when you're understanding what God wants to do and the benefit and the result at the end, then you get ready to endure to the end, to for God to achieve what you want and also when you understand that that is what god has to do in your life for you to be able to inherit the kingdom of god then you give your head to be cut off for the, the encounter so what is, that is what we have for today thank you so much father we give you glory for what you've done in our means lord every day we are keep surrendering asking you to research asking you to test us asking you to diagnose us there may be other things we have not even known because humanity we are we are we are so wicked our heart is so deceitful oh lord we ask you to continue to look into us we really want to be with you at the end of this race our father look into every one of us and even those that will watch this program later begin to put out all those things that is not suitable to you and begin to deal with them despite the pain we are going through when you are dealing with us when you are refining us our hope is at the end that we will achieve your plan and your purpose in our life Thank you for today. We give you all the glory for this week. We pray for your children, those that are connected, those that are yet to connect, you, those that are yet to watch. Protect us, oh God. Keep us safe, especially those in Nigeria, what they are going through now because of fear or whatever. Father, we are sustained by your heavenly ordinances, by your heavenly blessings, by your heavenly economy. Please show mercy for your children. We are that is tough. Make it easy for us because we are your children. Thank you for answering this prayer. Protect us from all dangers. You promise us that you keep us safe from evil. Lord, keep your children safe from all the evil that surround us in these last days. Thank you for answering this prayer. In our covenant time, in our time with you, continue to reveal yourself to us. Continue to reveal the mystery of your kingdom to us. Thank you because I've answered these prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining and God bless you. Love you. Bye.